trends in the periodic table. Atomic size. This increases as you go down a group. And this makes perfect sense because as you go down a group, there are more electron shells. We'll have a look at lithium here, which has got two shells. And we'll have a look at cesium here, which has got six shells because it's in period six. It's going to be a bigger size because there's more shells. What happens though, as you go across the period, atomic size decreases and there's a reason for that. So if you have a look at sodium, which is in period three, it's going to have a larger radius than chlorine. This is due to it having a greater positive charge. And this is known as the core charge, and I'm going to explain that in detail. So if we compare lithium and fluorine. Lithium, if we ignore these inner shell electrons, so these ones here, and we just look at the protons in the middle, the positive charge, and the electrons on the outside, we can see that there's more attraction here from these positive, from the more protons with the fluorine, than there is from the three proteins with the one electron on the outside there. But it is this positive charge that has more pull power. It's like having more magnets in the middle. It can pull these electrons in more closely. So this is what happens. These positive protons pull the electron shell in closer and thus you get a smaller atomic radius. We can work this out with something called core charge and core charge equals the number of protons minus the number of inner shell electrons and I'm going to show you an example. So this is what we were looking at before, lithium and fluorine. Our inner shell electrons are any electrons that are not our outer shell electrons. So anything that's not our valence shell electrons. So to work out the core charge of lithium, we need to work out the number of protons, which is three, minus the number of inner shell electrons, which is two. So we have three minus two. So we have a core charge of one for lithium. Let's have a look at fluorine its core charge will be equal to the number of protons, which is 9, minus the inner shell electrons, which again is 2. We get an answer of 7. So the higher the core charge, the more attraction the electrons on the outside shell have to the nucleus, and thus that nucleus gets smaller. So we've got a core charge of lithium of 1, a core charge of lithium um, of fluorine for 7. So this makes more attraction to the electrons on the outside, which makes the radius smaller. So if we have a look here, we can see as we go down a group, the atomic radius increases. And as we go across the group, the atomic radius decreases. As we go across on an angle like this, you will see that the atomic radius will decrease. Ionization energy. Ionization energy is the energy required to move one electron from an atom, and this is in gaseous state, but it's the energy required to move an electron. So, it's basically a measure of how tightly the outer shell electrons are held in to an atom. So if we compare metals and non-metals, we know that it's the dream of every single metal and every single atom to get a full outer shell. The easiest way for any of the metals to get a full outer shell is to lose their outside shell electron. For non-metals, chlorine here has got seven. It wants to gain an electron. So, ionization energy is the energy required to lose an electron. This doesn't require much energy. Sodium wants to lose that electron, so it's a low amount of energy that's required to lose that electron. To try and get rid of one of these valence electrons, though, 
chlorine doesn't want to get rid of those electrons, so it needs a whole heap of energy to remove those electrons. So non-metals have high ionisation energy. Chlorine wants to gain an electron, not lose an electron. So to pull this electron away, it requires a high amount of energy. We can describe ionisation energy as first ionisation, which is the energy required to move the first electron. Second ionisation energy, which is the energy to remove the second electron. Or third ionisation energy, which you guessed it, is the energy required to move a third of electron. This changes depending on what element we're looking at. For instance, sodium here. Sodium, to remove this first electron here, this would be its first ionisation energy. A second electron, we have to start removing a second electron from the next shell. This shell is full. Sodium wants, doesn't want to lose that electron. And the third ionisation energy would be to remove the third electron again from a full shell. So, to get rid of this electron doesn't require much energy because that's what sodium wants to do. So this is a low ionisation energy. But now to remove it from this full stable shell, second shell, we need a lot of energy. So it's a high ionisation energy. And the same with this third ionisation energy here. It's a lot of energy that's needed. This electron, it wants to go to give sodium the full outside shell, which means that it has low ionisation energy. But to remove a second or a third electron, this is going to require lots of energy. So it's said to have a high ionisation energy. Let's look at a second example here, chlorine. Chlorine doesn't want to lose any of these electrons, okay? It wants to gain an electron, it only needs to gain one. So, to lose this electron would be called its first ionisation energy, this one would be its second, and this one would be its third. All of these are going to be high energy ionisation, okay? High amounts of energy are needed to remove any of these electrons because chlorine wants to gain an electron, it's a lot easier need loads of energy to remove these electrons. Let's have a little look at going along at the elements. And I'm just going to look at period, oh sorry, group one elements here. Lithium. Notice that lithium has the lowest amount of energy for its first ionisation energy. Lithium, sodium, potassium. This is because these all only have one electron in their outside shell. So it doesn't take much energy to remove those because they want that full outer shell and they want to remove or they want to get rid of that electron. If you have a look to here, lithium has slightly higher than sodium which is slightly higher than potassium. As we go further down the periodic table Remember, as we go further down the periodic table, the size of the atom is increasing. So if we look at group one here, we can see lithium is a lot closer to the nucleus. So it's a lot harder to remove that electron than it is than this electron here in cesium-6 shell, okay? Cesium is really happy to get rid of that so far away from the nucleus there's not that much attraction between the two of them but lithium here it's a lot closer and that's why looking at the graph you'll see that the ionization energy decreases as you are going down the groups and this affects the reactivity so here's a little bit of lithium and we did this in class and you can see here that lithium reacts quite vigorously uh, moves around and that phenylthalene's turning pink which indicates that lithium hydroxide is being produced. Let's compare that though with cesium. So that's cesium being dropped into the bathtub there and we'll watch the reactivity. Kaboom! Slightly bigger reaction there than the lithium was. So in summary, ionisation energy decreases down a group and increases across a period. 
electronegativity. Think of electronegativity as the opposite of ionization energy because it's the ability of an atom to attract electrons. Want to have a look again at sodium and chlorine. Sodium here is ability to attract electrons is not that high, okay? Because it wants to give away that electron. So it's classed as having low electronegativity. Whereas chlorine wants to attract an electron, okay? It's got more protons in the middle and it only needs one more electron to get a full outer shell. So it's got high electronegativity. So the trends in electronegativity, it decreases as you go down a group and it increases as you go across a period. You can overall say that it increases as you go across on this angle here with fluorine having, or this area of ele um, elements having some of the highest electronegativities on the periodic table. So in summary, you can look at the trends of the atomic radius, which increase as you go down and decrease as you go across the period. Electronegativity and ionization energy both increase as you go across a period and they decrease as you go down the periodic table. You can also look at metallic and non-metallic character. So obviously the strongest metals are down in this bottom section here and these are the least metallic of your elements. So there's some questions for you to complete, uh, booklet questions and chapter questions, and you'll have some time in class to do that.